Hello, Three Trails. My name is Blake, and this is Stephanie hey. Shane. And we guys, we are here and excited to be with you. Um, in our series, Undivided, we have been talking about um, the different doctrines and things that have divided the church for centuries. Right. And one of them right now that is extremely divisive is women and their role or their lack thereof in church. And so we, this really became prominent at our church because a couple weeks ago, a church we've been partnering with, um, they've been digging into us and, and they went to our YouTube channel and they noticed that on Christmas, you preached a fantastic sermon on giving uh, birth right. and, and, and Jesus's birth. And we thought, what better way to, to celebrate the birth of a king than a person who can actually give birth? Right. And you did a fantastic job. It was highly relatable. But the people were like, are they unbiblical? They have a female pastor. And so I had to write them and, and talk about how, no, Stephanie is not a female pastor. And in our church, uh, we have women at every level of leadership other than a pastor because the Bible is very clear on that. And so I wrote them an email that went through the scriptures and went all that. And I, and I, and I put you in on it. And then your husband, Terry, is the other co-pastor. And, and so uh, I think you were reading it to him in the car. Yeah, it was it was me. It was me, my husband Terry, and my daughter Zoe. And so Zoe at the time was almost sixteen. Mm -hmm. And as you were kind of telling her her role or a woman's role in the church, what was her feelings? Well, the more I read, the more offended she got. And uh, by the time I had finished reading Blake's response, uh, her face was red and she was angry. And um, I couldn't even reason with her for a while after hearing that because she was so upset at the fact that God would allow women to be viewed in that way as far as the church is concerned. And Zoe and I are not like far distant people. Like we know each other. It's, oh, like, yeah. it's not like Pastor Blake. How, it's like oh, no. that guy who comes to the house. Like it's, Right. You know, it wasn't necessarily about Blake. It was about the scriptures that you quoted that made Zoe feel stifled as a woman or perhaps that she was not viewed as equal. So I can't say as a woman because I'm not. Right. So as a woman, why are you offended if that is what the Bible says? I have to say for me personally that it's been a journey to try to figure out why I was so ticked off about the fact that a man is telling me what I can and what I can't do. And I think that for me personally, um, it's not that I want to be a pastor and as I talk to other women, it's not that they want to be a pastor either. And when I find out what a pastor is, then I'm even more, you know, solid in the fact that that's not what I want to be. I don't want to be a pastor. It's just that I don't want anybody to tell me as a woman what I can and can't do. Um, I uh, was raised and I was told as a child that I could be anything I wanted to be. I raised my daughters in the same way, like, you, the sky's the limit for you. Don't let anybody tell you what you can and what you can't do. And based on some of my life choices and some of the situations that I found myself in, I was a single mom. And so as a single mom, uh, I was doing the job of the mother and the father. And so for me to find Christ and, and to realize that now I can't be that person anymore, I can't exemplify strength and nurturing in the same person, I have to just be nurturing, I can't be strong. Um, I, it's very offensive. It's very offensive, uh, especially when you consider men and sometimes how they have not always fulfilled the duty in which God had for them. And so I felt that in my own life circumstances, I was called to fill those duties that maybe the men in my life were not filling at that time. And then I go to church and suddenly that's a bad thing. And I had a hard time understanding that. Yeah. And I think it's important right here. Let's just put a disclaimer. Um, you're not a man hater. I love this, men. I and, love me some men. And we're not beating up men. So if you're like, here you go again, they're going to bash men. But I think as men, let's be secure. We've jacked up, right? Historically, um, we have messed up. Um, we have taken the scripture. We have made things really bad. And, right. and, and it's okay for us to, in humility, go, we, we need to get out of the tradition. We need to get back to the Bible and not be like, well, this is what I was always told. Right, but and, and and I think if we get back to it, um, people will stop um, rejecting you know the whole message, and, and it becomes more more palatable. And and it reminds me of you know growing up, my best friend, his mom was a pastor, and she had to become a pastor um, as a, as a Methodist because growing up, she followed Jesus. She went to a very conservative biblical church, 
And when she was like, I think God has a special mission for me, they said, go get married. You need a man to be all that God has called you to be. And so, so, I mean, that turned her away um, from that church. And and I agree with you. I think if we're not careful, men, we are turning women and then also the lost world, non-believers away from the gospel, not because thus saith the Lord, but because this is how we've always done it. Right. So we're going to find out this struggle between men and women. This is not a new struggle. No, this has been going on since the garden. So tell us that. What do you mean since the garden? Like, how did this struggle of, of, of women coming at men and men suppressing it, where did that come from and what does that look like? Well, I, it originated in the Garden of Eden. And if you go all the way back to Genesis chapter 1, the, the very story of creation, you will see the, the purpose that God intended it to be. So you will see in Genesis chapter 1 that God created man and woman, He created them male and female, and he gave them both the same commission. And there was no battle in the garden for superiority or for one exercising authority over the other. They were both confident in the roles in which God had designed them to fulfill. And and the the commission was was this. It was to uh, rule, to subdue the earth, and to be fruitful and multiply. And he said this to both of them, and he said he will bless them as they fulfill their purpose. So it didn't really change until after the fall. Yeah, and, and I think, so I think this is really important for this, this struggle. We need to realize we're on the same team. Absolutely. We're, we need to unite over the fact that, that we need each other. Both genders are important. You know, I, I was kind of raised, and I really was taught this, but I was caught this, that, that man, not mankind, was made in the image of God, and then woman was made out of man. Right. Which is not what the Bible says at, not all. at all. Both are made out of the image of of, of God, right. and both are carriers of it. They and both it, possess different qualities that represent the qualities of God. Yeah, and in fact, if you dig into a lot of the Hebrew words for God, it's actually feminine terms. And so God has no problem using the female gender to describe him because guess what? He created right. it. It is not you know, inferior. In fact, you know, you, you've talked to me about this a lot. Is, you know, as God was making creation, it got better and better. And what was the last thing God made? Uh, but God made at the end was A-OK. It was beyond that. It was perfection at the very end. It was the great crescendo. It was Eve. You see, he saw a need in Adam. And he saw that Adam was alone. And because of the need in Adam, he designed Eve to be like this, to fit perfectly with the need that was present in Adam. And so with that in mind, yes, she is different. Adam was created with certain components, and Eve was created with different components, but yet they were equal. There was no battle there. No, and and so they get into, they they had a commission, but they also had one rule. God defines right and wrong. Serpent deceives Eve. She eats of it. Um, Adam doesn't get deceived. The Bible's very clear. He chooses to obey and follow his wife instead of following God. Right. Eats of, of the tree. They are fallen. They're cursed, you know. Childbirth sucks. Um, it's you know, bad. Yeah, it's, it's bad. All bad. It's, it's terrible. It's bad. You know, uh, growing wheat is bad. Which I'm like, we get wheat and, and, right. and growing is rough. Yeah, and yeah. You guys thorns and thistles. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a bad yeah. deal for both of us. <laughs> it's a hard knock life for a man. <laughs> um, so I think so. But but then he also described the relationship between men and women moving forward, which right. is what? Well, the curse exemplified this, and this is how it changed. It went from them being like this, equal, the same, not the same, but, but sharing the same amount of equality. It went from that to a woman desiring after the position of a man and the man ruling over her. So she would constantly look at the position of the man and she would desire to be in control. She would desire to have that position and man, but yet would always rule over her. And if you think on this, think on this curse, think on this curse, ladies, and think how it's present within you. Because I know I see it within me. And, And this conversation that we're having is a perfect example of how it's present in women because I can't necessarily say that I wanna be a pastor. But yet I am offended at someone telling me that I can't be a pastor. And so there is the presence of the curse even in that or in any man telling you what you can or can't do. It it brings up tension. 
And, and I think we need to address it as men. Is, is Obviously, we have Scripture, but why are we um, so offended or, or so like, how dare a woman? Because if a woman's like, hey, I want to love Jesus and move his kingdom forward, and the first word of my mouth is, yes, but let's limit it, hmm. um, there's something wrong there. Right. What's the Be- priority? Because if Jesus is my king, um, you know, we'll get into this. He calls the orders. But we got to be very careful. You know, within the last couple of years, um, John MacArthur was actually a, I wonder if I remember, it was a panel of people, and they were talking about women and their roles. And Beth Moore was brought up, and, and, and Beth Moore is a very biblical teacher. Yes. Um, she is, she even says, I, I am not a pastor. Right. I'm under the role of my, my pastor. Um, I'm under the role of my husband. I mean, she's, for a lot of women, they're probably like, oh, there she is, you know, giving men what they want. But yet this pastor says, this is what I think of Beth Moore. She needs to go home. Hmm. And, and, and within that shows the, the pride and the ugliness that has depicted men in ministry. Right. So why wouldn't women, when they hear that there are men saying, no, you can't, their why first would they thought rebel? is, rebel. is, is yeah, right. you're not cool. That, that's right. not all right. Right. And so, and so that was the curse. And I think, as, I think as you're saying with women wanting that role, that's, that's part of the curse. And, and men going, no, know your role yeah. is part of the curse as well. Both sides play into the curse. And so what we can agree on, though, and you've kind of already touched on this, is that it wasn't like that in creation. Right. And it, we can agree on what was the biblical role of a woman? What, what was the crowning achievement that was Eve? And what, what made her so special? Well, and it was like I mentioned earlier with Adam, and when God saw the need that was present within Adam, he created Eve with that very need in mind. And so she was called the Ezer, which when I did some research on what the Ezer was, it's more than just a lot of translations just have helper. You know, when I think of a helper, I don't know. It just loses some of its power and authority. Like a, almost like a gopher. Yeah, like go like get that choice. for me. Yeah. Take care of this while I go handle the real business. You know, But it's more than a helper. It's a sustainer. And when you think of a sustainer, it makes the mission sustainable for man, which means that she shares. She's a counterpart. She's a companion. And and that's the part about Eve, about us, that is misunderstood. Um, We're not supposed to just finish for the leftovers. We're not supposed to just follow behind. We are there within battle. You know, we are possessing strength in our own ways, our own strength, our own authorities that exemplifies and adds to the role of man, our man, and vice versa. And I think that is that is so important we view that. And I think it's important, too, because I think sometimes people mis- mistray this um, with, um, you know, when you when you taught on first Peter and husbands and submitting it's submit to your own husband. Your own husband. Not every man. It's not, it's not you're my help me as in I walk around and I find a woman and that automatically Do what I say, woman. She does what I say. And let me say about submission. Submission is the worst word for a woman. Like if you want to really turn a woman off as far as the scriptures are concerned, you, you say submit. That you are called as a wife to submit. And I believe ultimately our culture has made submission a bad thing. But if it weren't for submission, you see, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have the gospel because Christ himself submitted to the cross. He possessed power and strength and submitted at the same time. It, it takes great strength to submit. And I think what, what Satan has done, and, and the curse is showing this, is that we're on the same team, right. but if we fight each Division. other, now we become the enemy, and now we can't fulfill the mission, and he doesn't even have to do anything now. Right. He's like, go. Right. You know, it'd be like you know, the, the Chiefs, and all of a sudden the defense starts tackling Patrick Mahomes, yeah. and Tyron Matthew starts picking off passes for him, and they're on the same team. Right. You will automatically lose, and I think that's why you know, in Christianity we're losing because we've lost sight that we're Satan the same. Satan has divided the house. Yeah, we're fighting the roles. Amongst each other. Now, one of the things that you brought up that I thought was really cool is, is we talk about, you know, women at the church, they can't teach men. Mm. But yet we have several examples of how important it is for a woman to teach a man. Right. Well, I mean, consider, consider your own lives. Like when I look at my, my life and the impact that I have had or the opportunity for impact that I've had on my children, I, I did teach. I do teach men. I teach my sons. Uh, I took part in teaching my sons, and I see that play out in the roles of women in society. I see that ultimately women initially have the biggest platform because they are the ones that prepare the hearts of their sons 
for the gospel um, when they are very young. And, and I don't even know what the cutoff is. And the Bible doesn't specify what's the cutoff from a woman teaching a child to a woman teaching a man. I, I don't think that that's the point. I don't think that's what God wants us to focus on. But I see these women all throughout scripture. And a story that, something that happened to me personally as I began to endeavor in this new part of my life where God began to reveal to me that he had maybe something else for me than what I thought it was. And I began to talk and Blake and my husband Terry, they gave me, they backed me. They backed me and they said, what you have to say needs to be heard and we're going to support you in saying that. And, and so as I began to speak out, I began to get criticism. And the thing that is most ironic about this is most of my criticism came from men. And it was as if they had to remind me who I was. And even though my husband, Terry, he is a pastor, he has not done, he is not a theologian. He does not have his doctorate in theology. And no man has ever told him that he needed to go to school before he could preach the word of God. And that's not even scriptural. But the first time I step out there, several men told me that I need to go to take some seminary classes. The same before. men who interact with Terry. Never, they, yeah. they, they critiqued me based on their relationship with Terry. So I just thought that that was ironic. And I was so troubled by this because it, it fed my insecurity as a woman. Like, what am I doing? I'm not supposed to, to be doing this. And, and God, he brought scripture to my mind and, and I, couldn't, I couldn't think of the whole scripture. So he took me to 2 Timothy and I'm reading in chapter three, and it's Paul, and he's talking to Timothy, and he's telling Timothy, hey, I, I know what they're saying about you. I don't want you to worry about them. Uh, I want you to continue in the way in which I have taught you. And, and as I read more, I'm like, okay, I'm Timothy. You know, God wants me to view myself as Timothy. And then, and then I'm like, no, that's not what it is at all. As I read longer, I read further in, Paul says to Timothy, he says, continue in the way in which you have learned from your infancy. You know the ones who taught you. And something about that just popped off the page and I was able to reference back to what was the scripture in Timothy? Second Timothy one, so two chapters earlier. Two chapters earlier. From his infancy, Paul brought up the fact, I want you to remember who taught you. It was your mother and your grandmother, Eunice and Lois. Yes. Women. Two women had the biggest influence. The influence was so great that Paul said, what they taught you is solid. And I don't want you to listen to what anybody else is saying. Continue in the way in which you have learned. And if that's Paul's not influence, mentor. absolutely. Paul, Paul wrote the word of God. The apostle and Paul. And he's putting these women on a pedestal. Absolutely. Not himself. Right. And, and I, to me, that, that is just so exciting to, to see that. And it reminds me of, of a story in Samuel. Where, where Samuel's mom raises him and it says that as soon as he was weaned, which in those times, that was about the age of four. Right. And she takes him to the tabernacle and the tabernacle was ran by Eli. And he was a judge and a high priest and his sons were just terrible. They, they were sleeping with the women. Mm. They were stealing. Stealing. They, I mean, they were just, literally they called them worthless fools. Right. All right. And, and so here is Eli, the man. The priest of all priests. And he taught his sons to be fools. Mm. But yet Samuel came in more prepared to be a prophet because his mama taught him up until the age of four or five. He was more prepared for her, from her. So I feel like, you know, is that not more important? I mean, we have promises from, from Scripture that says if you train up a child... In the way that they should go. They'll not depart from it. And I think for men, we view that as fathers. But we have so many examples of women doing that. Absolutely. We yeah. have Proverbs 31, the, pro the proverbial woman. And we always look at Proverbs 31 as a checklist for us, for women. I, I need to go through this mm. and I need to check mark. This is the woman that I need to be. But no, this is a woman telling a man, this is the qualities that you want in a woman. It's the woman transferring her wisdom to her son. And that part of it, and all the things that she lists off about the attributes and the quality that, that he needs to look for in his woman is strength and wisdom. And it's a lot of qualities that some people might say aren't necessarily feminine or the woman's role. In that, in that chapter, Proverbs 31, she buys a field. She, it doesn't say anything about her going to her husband and saying, hey, can I buy this field? She buys a field. She acts with authority on behalf of her husband and her children. I mean, it's it's submission, but it's in an aggressive way. Yeah, it, well, and, and his reputation is built off of who? His wife. 
Yeah. In the city gates, he's well spoken of because of the woman. Not they praise of what him. he's accomplished. No. So as you've noticed, we've yet to answer the elephant in the room. Why can't a woman be a pastor? So Stephanie? Well, Blake, a woman can't be a pastor because we'll tell you next time. We'll see you next week. See you then. Oh, yeah.